Amen. Now we're a nurse practitioner. Ah, just we're a nurse practitioner. I'm in Canada. And then until Polina, I never want to buy a mic. You can make me. So you know, what's it? Doctor, I'm a Muslim. When you say it's you, say when you mean I'm a Chinese baby. Doctor Boateng, you know, or your licensed pharmacist in three states: New Jersey, Philadelphia, and Delaware. To just say when you mean extra year, we will be able to be a you know for your Bafrabi a just say you know now they say we do as no sakra, but they say the M C Jami am an Indian baby and the Ono Yebe Kasa. Now, we can't talk about the problem. When you say, oh, 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 Doctors know how doctors are more deep, cold, bony, and they only have a We hear radio, the TV, so they are about medicine, you know, and alpha. In the end, they say, Doctor, you know, so on can enroll first. They say, about medicine, no one over can. But we want to talk about it. We can enroll, they use to, who come from us, DNS, or your DNS, or write, and they say, can't bear the drug, no crown, prescription, your trauma, or eyes, or what can you do now? Now, you didn't read. And you who are questioning me are not against the corner, put a gentleman in Casa, or can say we are. You remember, brain up your salad here beside your questions. Now, do we the car Casa not here? On so yet, Doctor Usu from Paul, Mommy and Kaye, my name. Doctor from Paul here, medical doctor, I work for Arado. I'm saying, I had here, more and more than my area, I wouldn't do a dear Cassia Woody. And then, what can I say? One day, why are topic in the simple? I say prevention is better than cure. We be in Nanka. Prevention is better than cure. You say, oh, you are partying or die out. Sorry, now be a man for a sin, a dear, a year, no, you say, yes, no, diary, and it's a no, 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 But, and no, Obeka screening, no, one say. So, okay, a man, Rako, Obeka, Obeka, be brave. But, oh, dear, listen. The tea, now, friend, you won't know when you are here, so, yeah. Now, for years, you say, so, be a movie, be. It is. Doctor from Paul, you have a father. Sorry, name my father. And he, Sabre, dear, may you come, you would be my dear, you would be. Now, for you, Chicago, Chicago, for a fortune, you are. Now, for you, I'm going to pay you. I'm going to pay you. Now, for you, I can kind someone. I can kind of. You're the general lady, you man. You mean to Chicago, for you.
Doctor Prepare, you know, one chain, dear Bompire, or my woman, no, no, so, so, oh, Mr. Sam Brassi, mommy, and sorry, I'm not a bomb pie. Now, I, Doctor Prepare, it's not for me, I'm batting. I'm so bad, you cry, I demand the company, I say, I'm batting. Let's say, Mohawk, I cry, I'm going to say, I'm going to now you in Kai shortest I theme for the day. And here you hand it um toss me and son. We say it's only one chapter. And then you can say chapter one, I say obviously chapter one by in cancer. And you hand it um toss me and son. It's chibu me no. What say? Odofo. Me in paye say I didn't in mu in see ye. Nanya a hoarding. Said the S. U. Cray, amen. The other for Mummy and your comb, so a question be out there, Tro, a bra, Doctor Priscilla, who is from Point Everbad. Now, you better hear a team song on Eddie and him, and say, You better talk one stand up. Prevention is very important. 
But answer and I start, you know, may that help me for I say for allowing me this platform to come and present the health lecture for this year, 2019. I think so, I say I am very proud within our individual churches because Every church has either say a nurse, nurse practitioner, or actual doctors, pharmacists, dentists. Amen. It shows that church you know, is growing. Amen. And we should be very proud. Amen. Normally, in a situation like this, if you ever had some health professional from outside, but you have hundreds or even thousands of dollars for them to give us a health lecture. But lucky, we are so blessed that we have our own doctors, our own experienced doctors, that Betsy me are trying what we need to do when it comes to our bodies. So we should be very proud. Um, I am a family medical doctor, meaning that I take care of adults all the way to babies, and I say babies all the way to adults. Now, one of my main goals is to make sure that Betsy me are prevented disease. What type of diseases? Of course, high blood pressure. So be any high blood pressure. If I was to take as a maybe a poll to see how many people have high blood pressure. And I said, if you even know someone in your family that, high, that has high blood pressure, most of us will raise our hands, if not all of us. And see, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, all these are conditions that I have very common, not only within outsiders, but well within our church and our community. And see, it's very important that we start thinking about prevention. Instead of saying, you yeah, better wait for these diseases to develop. We think about what can we do to prevent. And I said, EBA, unfortunately, what developed these conditions? So what are we going to do to maintain diarrhea and all to reverse it? And see, in next lecture, I know that's what we're going to talk about. Um, I'll come back and forth just so let you know what is on the screen. technicians and I will need your help in moving the slides. Somebody can move. Okay, very good. So a lot of people ask me, why should I go to a doctor? I didn't see my send me a appointment to go and see a doctor. Why? I feel good, I feel healthy. I don't feel semi tiamaya, I don't feel semi hunam yameya. I feel strong. Why should I waste time? Okay, maybe I may want insurance with you, but I don't go. Okay, maybe me need insurance because of immigration as I'm so I am not unable to go. All these are common questions. But ask yourself this question. Do you want to continue feeling strong? Do you want to continue feeling healthy? If you want to continue feeling strong and feeling healthier, you have to go and know your baseline. Know where you stand. Find out, ah, am I pre-diabetic? Am I borderline hypertensive? The most concerning thing about these conditions, then it said they are quiet. They don't give you a sign. They don't show you anything. Most people that have high blood pressure or diabetes, before they were given that diagnosis, they didn't know. They didn't know. If you are once in a while, no man your tipaya, but most of the time they feel okay. So that is the importance of seeing your primary care doctor. I saw who baseline. So, who baby I would now in regards to your health are very important. And I want to touch on, or at least speak to the men. Your men, I know that's in the audience today, they don't like going to the doctor. Most of my patients, I would say 85% of my patients are women. No man comes to the clinic. And say, if they come to the clinic, I know they are serious. So I know that if they come to the clinic, it's because of something very serious. But why should we wait to that point? I think say a very important say, yeah, making your mind. If you don't remember anything I'm saying today, remember this. Know your baseline. Let's repeat it. Know your baseline. Man say. Yes. And see, hopefully next year, at least. All of us will be able to come back and say, say, yeah, we know where we stand. And before I go fully into 
lecture. No, I want to also present something that I think is very, very important. Right now, no, with technology, no, we're in 2019. Very soon, we're moving into 2020. Right now, no phone, no, I had to say small computer. You can do so many things with your computer. And doctors are seeing that. And because of things like lack of insurance and all those, you know, not being able to see your doctor on time, we have created, and I said there's a lot of organizations, health organizations, that are more creating a program for those people that need access to care. Because many of us know that access to care is limited. Access to care meaning, say, yeah, you want to talk to your doctor. What for a doctor's office? But I'm going to say, oh, just said the next six weeks, next eight weeks. But oh, here with doctor, I know now. So what can you do? Another example, Obana Yare, when you fever. When you're sure it's the fever, I know you're serious, and you're serious. What for a doctor, nurse, and you say, oh, and you're brow, you know? No, you know, I can't. Okay, go to the emergency room. Hey, emergency room, I'm gonna sit there more than three, four hours, maybe even more than that. I don't even have insurance, what do I do? And so we have a program called 24-7 Doctor. 24-7 Doctor, a phone and as a telemedicine service. Where they are no answer will be your phone, your smartphone. Now I'm afraid. We am replacing your primary care doctor, but I had to say bridge to allow you to call and speak to a doctor. Just any question, and we'll be able to help you. On top of that, you know, okay, fever, no, Obano here, medicine. We can prescribe the medication and send it to your pharmacy of choice. And we can also send that same consultation to your doctor, to your primary care doctor. Now, a doctor know who said, even though they weren't able to access you, we had this happened and they can move forward with that. And see, we know Ebetimia Boal to avoid long wait times in the emergency room, urgent care, uh, you will be able to access from the comfort of your home. And if you want to see the doctor you're talking to, and now I said, now I requested a video, video consult. Every phone can do it. Won't hear any special EBR. And now I said, you say, I want video. A hua doctor and a bit appear and you will see their face. And if there's anything, maybe a baby a try, you want to show it to them, they will be able to see it. You don't need insurance. And so I'm promoting this mostly for yeah, 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 need insurance because you don't have insurance, but yet you need the health care. You can call them. So it's so more pen and you feel say wave I bet me call this number or write this number down. Website, you know, so well, you can go and check it out. And we also have doctors that are in the So it's very, it's a very good program. So um, I think it's something that we should take advantage. And yeah, moving forward, obesity. The first thing that will happen when you go to your doctor is, doctor, no What's the significance of your weight? Well, as you can see, you know, there is underweight, normal weight, overweight, and obesity. Yellow zone is obese. But I want to move back to the blue zone, overweight. Because you move fine, you're overweight. And this lecture, I know, is not to offend anybody, because we're all overweight. Meaning said, this weight, you know, when we look at it, it presents as a risk factor. It is a risk factor for a lot of diseases. High blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, arthritis, all these type of conditions. So you wanna know where you are when it comes to your weight. But at the same time, no, yeah, yeah, Ghana for no, I can even say as far as even blacks in general. Yeah, man, we, are, we have body. Who do compare the white eh, counterparts? Uh, we have more body, we have more shape. And eh, naturally, yeah, I eh, 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 so. So sometimes when we look at this scale, it's discouraging. Like, hey, me overweight. I thought that I have nice shape. So instead of just looking at that, we look at your abdominal circumference, your waist measurement. Most of us know how much our waist is, especially a man. But normal, we have to have a normal one. And normal waist for a man is 35 inches. And see, and go fiat. Well, and as we come back to your room, measure your waist and see where you land. And my man, my waist, and I say, yeah, less than 40 inches. 
And he said, Ufunu Tiahua, pay attention to it because it may be causing problems. How is it causing problems? Some fats, you know, that are piling, you know, it is also causing problems by increasing your risk for diabetes. It's causing, your friend, baby, insulin resistance. Insulin, you know, you hear insulin to digest our food and transport it to our several organs in the body. But so insulin, you know, and yet, that's when you risk diabetes. And so that big belly that is in front of you, no one down the line, you're going to develop diabetes or high blood cholesterol. Okay, so that is the significance of abdominal obesity. And so I picture, you, know, you see, there, Papa Nufunu face the foods that he's enjoying. Pano, soda, fried foods. And um, all those things is what causes a big stomach. And I said, Fukasia, that's what causes those things. So this uh, lecture is about prevention. So what can we do to prevent this? Number one, exercise, simple, free. When there is not anything that you have to do other than just move, okay? And then watch your diet, and we'll go into it a little bit. So let's talk about exercise. A lot of my patients, especially Ghana for, they will come to the office and they will say, hey, doctor, me me yeah, exercise, pa, me I go back and forth. To me, not sit back and forth, it's at work. That's not exercise. Yes, a, a level of physical activity, activity. Ooh, but you're not burning fat. And that's what we want to do. And he said, oh yeah, yeah, already you have diabetes, you have high blood pressure can use your work activity as exercise. And yeah, exercise. You as I shut that do not tread me on so either so be walk or either so be jog or be run whatever you can handle. Okay, be only treadmill. You have a street. Walk around your block. And exercise. And after a while, wow, be and as we take some feeling say, wow, I feel different. I feel lighter. That's exercise. And see, I want to emphasize that because a man for people say, oh, uh, let's say, for example, nurses, and I say nurses, they don't move the walking up and down, no move the patients, and they don't move lift or more push you or more. That's not exercise. That's your baseline level activity. Your body now you're used to that. It knows that this is what we do all the time. And see, I'm burning fat. So the goal of exercise is to burn fat. The recommendation is 150 minutes a week. 150 minutes a week. Doctor, me need time for exercise. I don't have time for that. Okay, only time, I divide it. But let me ask you something. If you don't have time for exercise, then you have time for death. Because that's where it will lead you. If you don't have time for exercise, then you have time for complications. Your quality of life is here. So person will get you for years, doubles, triples. If you want to continue doing that, it's a open time for exercise because that's what's going to give you the endurance to continue. So let's move forward to blood pressure. Where well, everybody knows, say blood pressure, they are set, they're checking your blood pressure, say you're making sure, say your blood pressure uh, within normal limits. But let's look at yellow zone. Yellow zone, or your trust pre prehypertensive or prehypertension. Prehypertension or systolic number, and I said, Upper number, the top number is 120 to 139. Bottom number is 80 to 89. Most of us in this room, I think says if we were to check your blood pressure, you will be within that, that range. But it's prehypertensive. It sounds like a good, it sounds normal, it sounds healthy. But this is in the yellow zone. It's telling you, say, be careful. Be careful because one day, yeah, you're going to end up in the red zone if you don't make changes. What's the significance of blood pressure? Blood pressure, blood pressure. We don't want you to get a heart attack. We don't want you to get a stroke. We don't want you to develop kidney problems. Problems in the adults. So you have to know what your baseline, know where you stand. And he said, you see there, oh, my pressure is in the red zone. Then you know, sir, I need to make some changes. What are those changes?
what are those changes? Diets. I hope so, move the pictures that I've posted there, because they are very important. I wanted lecture I know, to be more relatable to yeah, yeah, Ghana for yeah, yeah, diets, because sometimes they're very hard. Yeah, and who, what we should be eating. Oh, see, I wanted to point out some local things that we use in our kitchens. And see, number one, salt in Chile. We need to be careful with our salt. You are high blood pressure, but yet you are eating salt or taking in or adding salt to your food. And most of us, I think, say, we, you know, from the past lectures and things of, like, of that nature, and we have learned, say, adding salt in yet. But there are hidden salts that we have to be careful about, hidden salts. And see, what I did was I took some, like I said, some local foods that they yet, you know, so we can see how much salt we're putting in our foods. And I want you to keep in mind that men can't say these things, and yet. So I don't want anybody to say, say, Dr. Wuzu say, Maggie Cube, and yet, tomato paste, and yet, I didn't say that. I'm saying, say, we have to pay attention to what we are putting into our body. So who would himself with high blood pressure? You have to take accountability. You cannot blame the doctor, say, ah, doctor, no one can. He didn't tell me, say, say, me do we are, and that cause you problems. You have to take accountability for your body. And say, say, oh, should I read the, the labels on the food? Even Ghana for products, for four, all those things, no fret. Bag, you, know, you see, say, a much more nutritional facts, Agusu. So we have no excuse. We have to read and look at that. So let's look at it. Your total salt intake should be 2,400 milligrams a day. And see, this is one day. This is now one meal. So when you're just for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, this is for the whole day, including snacks. 2,400 milligrams. It sounds like a big number, and see, red. Uh, tomato paste, 20, 20 milligrams in one can of tomato paste. And I know, say, well, most of us know, say, say, yeah, 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 for yeah, and I said, yeah, inquire. We don't use one tomato sauce or one tomato paste. We use a couple. And see, down by us, you know, they add it up. Um, sardine, 270 milligrams. Corned beef, 480 milligrams. Smoke turkey, depending on how much, 600 to 1,200 milligrams. We're just one meal, oh, one meal. And then I said, so yeah, look at our seasonings that we put in our foods. Adobo, goya, that's very common, 95 milligrams. But that's just a one tablespoon. And some of us use more than that. And then finally, Maggi Cube. Maggie cube, 2,500 milligram, one cube, one small cube, oh. and is that one cube, you know, your whole daily allowance of salt in the world, and more, it was that one cube. Meanwhile, so, your sister, four, five, I do your stew, oh. and then you're wondering, I didn't see that, me what high blood pressure, me take you three, five medications, but yet still, it's because of this, we have to pay attention. And again, Minka said, don't use it. Use it, but be wise about how you're using it. Because this can cause complications for you. And why would you You know, say you have high blood pressure, so you have to pay attention. Let's move on to diabetes. Diabetes there yeah, is, I think personally, you know, I feel say a worse than high blood pressure because it's so complicated. It can cause so many problems in the body. It affects me affect the white brain, it me affect the knee, it me affect the skin. Everything. It can affect everything. And see, a very important thing, if you have diabetes, we'll talk about it. But if you don't have diabetes, prevent it. Try to take lecture seriously and make some lifestyle changes. Now, for those of us that you know, age 45 and older, which I think the average age in this room, bare 40s and up, you have a risk for diabetes. Another risk factor is your weight. So at the beginning, you know, I talked about weight. Weight is very important. If you can lose just a few pounds, with blood pressure, betting me a drop, just a few, maybe even five pounds, you can drop your blood pressure by a few points. 
you can reverse, or not totally reverse, but with improve with diabetes control, with just weight loss alone. And I've seen it. And then finally, if you have um, first degree relatives with diabetes, first degree relatives means that, oh mommy, oh papa, your brother or your sister. That's your first degree family, and that's an immediate family. So Omobabu or diabetes, that means you have a risk for that as well, naturally. And see, you have to pay attention to your diet. You can't just eat however. You have to pay attention because, unfortunately, you know, a genetic gift that's been given to you. And then finally, nothing we can do to control that. But so we are black, we are African. It's a risk within our community. So diabetes prevention, what can we do to prevent? Number one, exercise. And so both say every time we talk about what can we do to prevent something, it goes back to the basics, exercise. We have to exercise. And then there's certain foods that we should pay attention to. We should avoid sugars, added sugars, soda. Those of you that are soda, you have to be careful. I always tell my patients, soda is diabetes in a cup. It's just carbonated water and sugar. That's it. And so if you are drinking soda, especially Umano, if you are feeding them soda, you are increasing their risk for diabetes down the line. And to soda, I would never say to stop anything, but I would say to stop soda because soda is very dangerous. And then let's talk about actual foods diabetes say yeah, pre yeah, avoid it to prevent diabetes. And that's um, refined grains. Refined grains means white rice, white bread, anything white, and yeah, mouth. Because it has no wheat, it has no substance to it. White rice is yeah, it's a staple in our community. Some people need to eat rice before they feel that they have something to eat today. And see, white rice, you're very dangerous. White rice alone can send you into diabetes. You have to pay attention. I've had patients where I tell them, let's change things. Instead of saying, we'll white rice, you know, try to eat brown rice and let's see what will happen. And I've seen it where their numbers, their di diabetes numbers, you know, come down. Because white rice, you know, they're not eating it anymore. Once in a while, they'll be to me, but if you have diabetes, Unfortunately, you know, you can't take play with it. You have to make serious changes. If not, you will develop complications. And see, white rice, you know, yen try say once in a while, and I say yen try say you better share how to eat brown rice because they're bad boy. And then I know say brown rice. Some people are saying say mm, taste no dear, I don't know. You will learn to enjoy it after a while. You no, know, while you will prefer brown rice because you will feel lighter. Some people, after eating white rice, me personally, you know, I eat white rice, I eat brown rice, but when I do white rice, uh, I feel happy, I feel sad. After eating, you know, I want to go to sleep. That's not normal. After eating, you know, you should, that your food should be your energy, you as a gas for a car. That it should be your energy fuel. Eat, you, know, you shouldn't feel sad, oh, my bread. Why? It's supposed to help you. But when you change and eat more um, grains, like brown rice, brown um, bread, and things like that, so you feel a difference. You feel stronger and you feel lighter on your feet. So a uh, brown rice is something we should think about. Fried foods, deep fried meats, chicken, naya chinakama, naya sade, chinegusu, naya niaje. Meanwhile, so you're causing hypertension and high blood cholesterol and diabetes. We have to be careful. Fried pastries. I had a patient, now Ghanani, mommy, she came to me. She said, Doctor, I don't eat. In the morning, I eat small. And I said, Okay, let's go over what you're eating. What do you eat for breakfast? I say, Tea, nibba fruits. <laughs> tea, nibba fruits. Oh. See, we have to think about what we're eating. Buff fruits, you know, you have to fry it. Oh, and now we you know, so know as white. There's no substance to it and sugar. Meanwhile, so she's worried about why her diabetes is out of control. Yes, moderation. You have to eat in moderation, but you also have to pay attention to what you're eating. And then red meat. 
red meat here very important because beef, lamb, goats, whatever it is that you like, and also Betsy Mia increase your risk. The thing is, those type of animals, you know, enamno, the actual enamno is full of fats and it's not good for you. So it's very important for us to limit what we're eating in regards to red meat. So let's move forward. So I like this picture because picture we're in a demonstration of how your plates should look like. Especially so we're diabetic. This is how your plate should look like. Dinner plates, you know, my estimate is that the average dinner plate size is um, nine inches in diam um, diameter. And so with plates, you know, when you are putting your food on your plates, draw imaginary line down the middle to say where you know. 50% of your plate should be vegetables. 25% should be starch and bread, and then the remaining can be your protein or your meat. And I will change that to say, say it be a fish or chicken without the skin. That's how our plate should be. But I know, say, that's not how we eat. We don't eat 50% of vegetables. That's not how we eat at all. But if you are diabetic, and I say, oh, or risk, oh, mama, oh, papa, somebody close to you has diabetes. Unfortunately, you know, this is how your plate will look like. And naturally, you know, you will see said changes, Beba. And vegetables, you know, and yet broccoli, I mean, broccoli is good, but it's not those vegetables I'm talking about. I'm talking about green leaves, spinach, kale. Those leaves, you know, naturally, they are bitter and tasty good but it's so full of um, ingredients that will help you. So full of things that Betsy Mia cleaning will system. Betsy Mia eat all the things that maybe I have block or arteries or whatever, you know. Those vegetables are very important to eat. And so this is how your plate should look like. And see, you try to be at this evening for dinner, you know. You better share that, I divide the plates, you know, into 50% vegetables, 25 starch and uh, 25 meat. And starch, you know, rice is included in starch. Okay, starch, yam, all those things. That's your starch. Spinach. So just imagine. And then there's other things going with. Let's talk about fufu. Fufu, yeah, a lot of people, especially as Antifo, they like fufu. If they don't have their fufu, they have a problem. So I'm not saying say fufu, yeah, fufu, yeah, good. You can eat fufu all you want. But in Kwano, let's look at what we're putting in the soup. Yemma in Kwano, you're more healthy. Try to eat vegetables. Bebu in Kwano, we said, yeah, you will get the vegetables and I said the ingredients you need to reverse or maintain or prevent diabetes. Cholesterol, another thing that we have to know our baseline is very important. I said, oh, baby, I will in regards to your um, cholesterol levels. You need to know, say, am I high? Somebody like, maybe, or maybe you will see me, you will think, say, oh, wait there, she don't have high blood cholesterol. But you will be surprised and you will be shocked. Say, skinny people or people that appear to be skinny or not obese or overweight, they can have high blood cholesterol. That is why I said, oh, call a primary care doctor. Now call check it and see where you are. Because if you are high blood cholesterol or bordering high blood cholesterol, and who are to me, I make changes so that down the line, you know, and problems. So we hear a lot about cholesterol, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. When you go to your doctor and ferret, ask questions. I know say sometimes Ghana phone they feel say they may brought for, but look at me today. Tree, you know, I'm not that good at it, but I'm trying. And to all know you, you can do the same thing. Talk to your doctor. All of them say you're not from here. They know that already. And they want you to ask questions. But let me tell you, they're not going to say, say, ask your questions. They're not going to tell you because they don't need time. And to yourself, will you take advantage and say, listen, I have a question. Because that's their job. And to yourself, don't feel any way or feel shy say, I can't express myself. Call somebody that you know. No, come home for that appointment. 
and get your questions answered. So you have good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. Well, good cholesterol, the significance of it, and it said, what it does, it goes into your arteries and it cleans out a you know, the whole arteries you know, that becomes plaque. Plaque you know, is what blocks the arteries. Arteries you know, in your whole body from our brain down to our feet. And you know, feed it, your brain, and you know, feed it, your heart with blood that is full of, that should be full of nutrients and oxygen. And see, you want to make sure say your good cholesterol or your, your good cholesterol is at normal limits. Bad cholesterol, the significance of bad cholesterol is it shows, it can give doctor I know, some idea of your risk for heart attack and stroke. Today, you can go to your doctor and they can calculate your risk for heart attack and stroke within the next 10 years. On Betimi, a customized uh, calculation, where they are yet general uh, calculation, and uh, customized to you. They look at risk factors. Risk factors to serve who age. Well, okay, before we go into that, I want to say, where are uh, arteries? I want to say, yellow, uh, you know, that is plaque. So just imagine, arrow no, is showing you the flow of blood. It's just imagine that what we read and numb and all these bad things, and this is what is building up. After a while, you'll get a heart attack or you'll get a stroke. That's how it developed. So let's talk about those risk factors and start calculation. Number one, um, so we have 40 years and up. As that, that's when your risk really starts to increase. And as you are aging, you know, your risk, the older you get, your risk, the more um, risk you have. Because naturally, you know, we have to die. So that's just something we can't help. Your sex, whether so yeah, or ba, or yeah, or bema, that, well, let's say, say, emema, you know, they have 10 times more risk. 10 times more risk for high blood pressure and um, for heart attack and stroke. Ten times old. You see, a man know that won't pay doctor's visits, you know. This is where you stand. Because naturally, you know, without doing anything, you have a ten times more risk. And see, even though you're feeling strong, oh, nothing back and forth, you know, you are walking dead if you don't go and monitor yourself. Um, and then, obviously, with blood pressure. So with pressure, I know what's through it. Of course, you are at risk for heart attack and stroke. And then, obviously, so you're diabetic or if you are a smoker. Smoker, dear, we don't have that problem in this community. And see, we don't even have to talk about it. There are two types of fat. So now we're talking about preventing cholesterol. There are two types of fat that I say you pay attention to. Now, keep in mind, say, remember I said, Read your labels because they hear power. I won't see me read the labels now. Call somebody to read it for you because they are very important. Read your labels. There's two types of fat, trans fats and saturated fats. Both fats are not good for you. Both fats are not good for you. Trans fats, you know, what it is, is, is in, it's found in processed foods. McDonald's, a microwavable food. Anything that's been artificially processed, has trans fats and yet good for you. And to pay attention, if you read your labels, you will see that those words are there for you to, to see. Saturated fats are fats that you should not eat, or at least as a will limit it. Fatty beef, lamb, um, chicken with the skin. I think say, most of us, I'm hoping say, most of us, your chicken, your cleaning, your yeast skin, everyone, because Skin, you know, that's where all most of the fat is. And see, I would recommend that you should take the skin off. I know say it tastes good, but it's causing more problems than good. Um, and then um, butter, cheese, dairy a products. Some people think say we are two percent milk a day, we are good, but it actually still has some saturated fats in it. Oh, five minutes, sorry. Okay, any anyway. What about egg? Egg is also a good a question. Egg contains cholesterol, however, when compared to trans fat, 
it's not as bad. The egg is yeah, good, but you shouldn't eat too much of it. <clears throat> the white part of the egg, you know, if so, person who the egg, but you want to make sure that not increasing your cholesterol um, intake, you, know, you will want to eat the white part. And then boiled egg is better than okay, fried. Okay, so yeah, move it quickly. Prostate screening. We're going to talk about preventing cancers, different cancers. Unfortunately, you know, we can't avoid it. It's something that we have to pay attention to. Prostate, you know, is in our men. Oh, and I picture, you know, you see, say, baby, a doctor, no finger, no down. That's what the prostate is. And sad too, you know, that's where so that's the that and I said that's the pathway of Johnson. And sometimes if the prostate gets big, it's me near that area, and that's when you can develop symptoms like um maybe a ujunsua flow no yet even and yet smooth. And I say okay, so junsua, but you feel like you want to go, but it's nothing is coming out. Don't ignore those signs. Don't say that we didn't mean you need to see. That's how it is. No. It can mean that there's something going on. It can be as simple as maybe a prostate, you know, but you want to make sure say, there's no cancer that's causing problems. Ujunsu are not one blood. You want to make sure say, you go to your doctor and you check these things out. But maybe if you went to your doctor before for screening, he will catch it early and we wouldn't have this problem. Okay, pap smear screening. Where the amount of we know what pap smear is. But I want to clear some things here. Pap smear, you know, and yet for yeah, man, or be a yaware, or we've had relations with a man before. No, that's not what it's for. It's to screen for cancer. Because I have a lot of ladies that will come, young ladies that will say, Zemidia, I haven't slept with anybody. It's not about that. What it is for is to screen for cancer. And then I want to focus on, okay, where you just picture of your normal cervix and abnormal. But I want to focus on yeah, man, that, man, that maybe you're yeah, over 50, 55, or you are no longer having your menstrual period. A very important say, if you notice that there's any bleeding, it's not good. I had another lady, another example, with the onye ganeni, but hating me, and she, I think she was 62 or something like that. And for 10 years, she hadn't had a period. And then all of a sudden, oh, why not blood? And she's thinking, so, oh, wait there, I think there may be a man that may be a patient, yes, sir. And she may slow down. And I told her, sir, no, I don't think so. It's because of your physical work. I think something is wrong. And she said, yeah, CAT scan. CAT scan, unfortunately, she had stage three ovarian cancer. So it's really, really important that we pay attention to our bodies. If you've been going and your body has been behaving one way for many years, and then all of a sudden, I say, son, you have to pay attention. Hey, it's time. Your body is talking to you. Pay attention. And for women, you know, this test you should do every three years. I know, say, you're uncomfortable, but you still have to do it and make sure I said, oh, you're okay in that area. And then breast cancer. Breast cancer, be breast cancer no, before, no, it was starting at age 50, but they were missing a lot of women that were coming in with breast cancer. And they say, you know, many organizations are recommending, say, yeah, starting from 40, as young as 40, to do breast cancer exams. And that's another thing that sometimes they are uncomfortable. I know many women that almost pass out mammogram because not say machine or meow and they don't like it. But I, you would rather say machine or meow instead of cancer. So you want to at least annually or every other year try and get your mammogram. And then oh, there's another important thing to note because yeah, blacks or Africans. Unfortunately, when we get these type of conditions, cancer, for some reason, you know, yeah, they're not I get aggressive. It be yet common amongst us. But if we get it a aggressive type, and she said, we we'll check it annually. As soon as we see any small changes, why ever to me, I test it, I what we can do, give you some medications, treat you. 
And this can extend your life five years instead of reducing it by one. So this is something that you should take seriously. Okay, colon cancer. Again, certain types of cancers, ABI is not so common amongst us, but when we get it, they are very aggressive. We should start at age 50, but say, say, you know, a lot of organizations are even encouraging, say, yeah, yeah, blacks, you know, yeah, try set, yeah, 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 colon screening, you know, as young as 45, because so many people are coming um, with these uh, conditions. <clears throat> And then how do we prevent colon cancer? Again, our food. Yeah, Pay attention to what you're eating. Try so many more, more vegetables. And avoid red meat. And see, you have to be very careful. Even though it tastes so good, it's causing more problems than good. And then depression. And this is my last A. Depression, you're very important but it's also something that has been overlooked especially within the sda community because we know say yes he will take care of us he, you know can solve our problems but sometimes you know as human beings sometimes problems you know, to me are so overwhelming that not at daniwa dream next thing you know you are a little off next thing you know you feel so sad Oh, you're sad. You don't even know why. Why you're sad? But why you're sad? Oh, I know who's soon. And I said, which is even more common, anxiety. All the time, I said, well, I'm like, I'm nervous. Oh, I feel sad. Be, be bad, Especially, Emmanuel. I have a lot of Tanyan women when they come in. So, me, oh, I said, my heart, you know, eh, but um, anxiety. And yes, we should use our pastors and use our spiritual leaders in that area. But you also want to make sure, sir, you talk to your healthcare professional. Because sometimes depression, you know, to me, quite to a certain extent where you need more than just your pastor. Obviously, so he will make sure, sir, we are okay. But you have to try to help yourself as well. And see, Medibeto had this is um, the end of my, or uh, Anasa Medibesi had this is my, the end of my lecture. But in summary, you know, routinely see your primary care doctor and know what your baseline. Know where you stand. Know where you are. Am I pre diabetes? Do I have high blood pressure? Okay, I have diabetes, I have high blood pressure. What can I do to maintain? And I said, what can I do to control it? Said you ain't create any problems for me down the line. Prevention is better than cure. Amen. Amen. Anna.